Coming up next, learn how a whole community celebrates the stinking rose. Discover what it's like to eat kangaroo and other exotic meats. Find out about this popular celebrity chef. And understand how important items like these are to a festival. It all starts now on FunAddicts.tv. Hi, I'm Joni. And I'm Rich. 2007 was the 29th year of the Gilroy Garlic Festival, and although we were both born in the Bay Area, neither of us had been to this world-famous event before then. Yeah, we finally had a chance to learn why so many thousands of people kept coming back year after year. I think it has to do with a lot more than garlic, but I don't think we'll find any vampires here. I hope not, but there are many interesting people to meet, Rich. Stay with us and find out who they are. As you would expect, the focal point of the 29th annual Gilroy Garlic Festival was garlic, also known as the Stinking Rose. From celebrity chefs to gourmet alley to souvenirs, garlic was everywhere. The festival also featured more than 100 arts and crafts booths, a popular children's area, and musical entertainment. But no matter where we went at this huge festival, garlic was always close by. a chef like you to the Gar Gilroy Garlic Festival, what draws you here? I'm a big fan. I'm Why a big fan. Well, I mean, one of, I got two restaurants named Johnny Garlics, so I do a lot of garlic in my food. Garlic is in almost everything I make. Almost every ethnicity has garlic in it. I mean, every, almost every ethnicity of food has garlic in it. Um, so, I, I, and then just anytime a community rallies 4,000 people together and puts on an event that brings 250,000 people to it in the middle of the summer, and you eat the bodacious bulb and you drink beer and you great food and there's competition and there's entertainment. I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> what you like about the festival. In fact, now, you grew up in Northern California, yeah. is that right? Yep. So, uh, did you hear about the Gilroy Festival before? Did you used to come to it? Renowned. I came 13 years ago, it was my first time, and it's renowned. Everybody knows about it. Everybody, know, everybody across the country knows about Gilroy Garlic Festival. This is the premier festival, I think one of the premier festivals of food, in my opinion. So, uh, it's, it's not hard to know about it. Now, what, what would be your one tip you give to people that like to use garlic in their cooking? Well, treat garlic with respect. Dried out garlic, sprouting garlic, don't use it. Burn it, anytime you burn your garlic, start over. Uh, don't crush the garlic, chop the garlic. Garlic is fantastic, it adds flavor, it adds essence. It can be a hint, it can be an addition, a flavoring. Do the shades in your hairstyle make you the chef you are today? No, no, this, I, I've had everything from the mullet to the shaved head to the you name it. Uh, I love sunglasses. I wear a ton of them. I have 80 pairs of sunglasses. Um, and I enjoy them because it's the accoutrement, as, as, as we would say. I, uh, no, I'm a, what she's what you get. I wear flip-flops and shorts and I'd wear a t-shirt today if I had it or red sunglasses. Now I don't, as soon as anything becomes me, as soon as something becomes somebody, then they start losing touch with who they are. So I try to just stay as free to however it is and just is what it is. Now, from where you grew up, I heard you grew up in Ferndale, is that right? Right. I mean, we come from a town, Ferndale, where it's such a community-based town. Every time something happens, everybody rallies around each other. So all those influences, I mean, all the, the Holy Ghost Festival, the Portuguese, I mean, all the, the Danish Hall, I mean, all these different community involvement, community events, all of that, the major influence in my life about food and about community and you name it. What about your future plans and how did you get to where you are today? Future plans are just keep having fun. You know, I got two boys to raise. Um, I like hot rods. I like my restaurants. I like doing shows. Uh, I just try not to squeeze it too hard. As long as I just kind of let it evolve the way it evolves, it just seems to kind of happen. And I don't, and that's just how my life's always been. So I don't really get too uptight about things. I just kind of... If it goes on, it goes on, it goes down, it goes down, and, you know, that's it. Now, many of our viewers know you from the Food Network, but where's one place on the Internet would be the best place for them to find out more about what you're into and all the different things, the restaurants, everything? Uh, my website, Guy Fieri, G-U-Y-F-I-E-R-I, uh, dot com, and you can find out. All, you can go in there and change all my looks. Make Guy's new look. Afro, Devo glasses, Fu Manchu. Bald, ski goggles, beard. However you want. There's, like... There's 500 different variations you can make. 
Now you talk about community and, you, and even in your demonstration here today, you mentioned, I mean, it's more than just you. A lot of celebrities, they focus just on themselves, but you really focus on the people around you. I've always been a community guy. If I ever really make it in this business, in any business, philanthropy will be my kick. Kids in particular. We need to get back and focus on our community as much as possible. Thank you very much. Totally, brother. Nice to have Thanks you guys come lot. out. Thanks a lot. Tell me now, how long have you been playing with fire? 22 years officially. Okay, and so you are officially a pyro chef here at the Gara Festival? That's correct. That's so tell me a little bit, how did you get involved in being a pyro chef? Uh, one, of the, one of the originators here in the alley was a friend of mine. He invited me to come out, and I've just continued since then. Now, I notice your shirt is full of flames now. Uh, do you play with fire, uh, even not at the festival? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, here's the only place I can do it officially and uh, try to have fun with it. Samakshi, what do you cook? Uh, mostly the calamari, the calamari and a marinara sauce. And what else do the chefs um, cook here on, this, on these great big pots and these great big fires? Well, here in Gourmet Alley, there's several different types of food being cooked here in the alley. It's being sold on both sides. Uh, the only thing I'm affiliated with is the Pyro Chefs. We cook uh, scampi and lobster butter and the calamari and the marinara sauce. Now, what's over here that they're cooking over a barrel, I a trash can it looks like? This is a uh, chicken garlic stir fry. And I might say it's very delicious. <laughs> um, so, um, how many chefs are here? I couldn't even tell you. We're all volunteers. Here with the Pyro Chefs, there's at least 30. Uh, there's a lot of people out here volunteering their time. So is there any training or any waivers you have to sign? <laughs> yeah, back in the old days, they used to make you sign waivers. And there is training, safety. Every year we go over safety. Uh, before every shift, we go over safety. Uh, because as you can tell, uh, it can get pretty dangerous back there because we are playing with fire. So how, if somebody wanted to become a Pyro Chef, what would you recommend for them to do? A lot of guys have started behind us, behind the chefs, cleaning pans. you got to work your way up. And uh, you got to have just a certain amount of enthusiasm. And you can't be afraid of the fire. <laughs> so have you scorched some hair off your arms in years past? Yes. My mustache, side of my head, a lot of scars, a lot of burns. Yeah. But come back every year. It's a lot of fun. I notice you don't wear uh, fire protection suits, so you just have to really follow those safety rules. No, it's it's all about uh, trying to stand in there and take as much heat as you can. And if you can stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. All right, then I guess it's time for us to go too. Thanks, thanks, Mark, for talking with us this afternoon. Thank you. So I've been doing this uh, twice a day, every day for the last 28 years. <laughs> wow, 28 years you've been doing it. So what exactly is a garlic topping contest? Well, garlic topping is where we bring in garlic from the field and uh, it's a demonstration of how garlic is actually harvested here in the fields in Gilroy and over in the San Joaquin Valley. It's pulled out by hand, laid out to dry for a couple weeks, then each bulb is individually cut into the what you see in the store with the roots cut off and the stems cut off. And that's the demonstration that we do out here today. How much time are they given and, uh, and, and how are they judged? Well, we give them a five minute time limit because when you're going full tilt, five minutes is a long time to be doing uh, garlic topping. And so they top for the weight. Whoever tops the most total weight is the winner of the $50 first prize. How, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this six years. Okay. Six years? Yeah. And uh, is, do you do this for your living then? No, todo el tiempo. Soy carpintero. He's a carpenter and he takes care of, he's the handyman of the, uh, the ranch. Oh, okay. Yep. He does it, you know, once a year just to compete. Is this the first time you've won? No, it's two years ago. Two years ago he won too. And and his wife won today too. Oh, so she was the woman's yeah, yeah. winner, huh? <laughs> Do you practice for this? Yeah. Okay. And uh, do you use garlic a lot in your daily life? All the time. <laughs> What's your favorite use of garlic? Ah, pickle garlic. Oh, yeah, pickle garlic. Pickle garlic. Pickle garlic. Pickle garlic. Yeah, oh, I haven't really tried nice. that yet. Okay, so. Oh, me lo como fresco. Oh, he eats it right fresh. 
All the time. And what do you win for? Uh, what do they give you for winning this? Ah, 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I noticed it seemed like the crowd wasn't so interested in the actual results as they were for when you finally released them at the end. What was that all about? Well, I think the the whole anticipation builds up of the topping, the contest, the winner, and then whatever garlic is left behind, they get to take home. So I, I just think it's a total build up to the end of the, the competition, and, and, it, and it's good fun for everyone. It really looked like good fun. Uh, so tell me, is garlic still harvested manually like that? Yeah, when for the garlic that you see in the stores are still harvested by hand. And that's why it's, it's, it's more expensive because as the minimum wage goes up, prices go up, so does the cost of garlic. Forty percent of the cost of garlic is labor. So you can see as the prices go up, so does garlic. And how does uh, Gilroy garlic compare? I, I know there's a lot of imports now coming in. What should people understand about the difference? Well, the difference, California garlic has a stronger flavor, has a higher bricks level, which is the actual solids of the garlic. So you have a more flavor. The Chinese garlic, which you're probably alluding to, comes in, the whole root plate is sliced out and it's flatter so that you can tell in the store. If it has a little bit of roots on it, it's California garlic. The Chinese garlic is less flavorful, therefore it's less expensive. Back to the competitions. Okay, so we saw the men's topping. I know earlier you had the women's topping. What is the braiding? Uh, braiding is, there's a, it's a, they come in, they'll have people get tickets and they'll t actually teach people how to braid garlic. They'll get a little bag of garlic with stems and uh, they'll teach them how to braid it and that way they can do it, take that home and have a little souvenir from the festival. That sounds great. So what, uh, what should people look for when they buy garlic? Uh, is, there, uh, is it worth buying fresh or uh, jarred or what, what do you, should they look for? That's a great question. If, if, if you're looking at the, the bulb garlic, you want to make sure the bulb is firm and tight, doesn't have any green sprouts coming out, and you want to make sure it has a little bit of a root on it. Then you know it's California garlic and it's going to have all the flavor. You can also buy peeled garlic, which is the cloves that have already been peeled by, what we do is by air. And that'll be in plastic jars, but make sure you look at the label. If it says made in China, China stay away from it because it's not going to be as flavorful. So tell me, what's the difference between a garlic that's grown locally here or within the United States as opposed to a garlic that's grown um, outside the United States? The garlic that's grown in California has a particular pungency to it, as you just demonstrated when you go, whoo, whoo, whoo. China has a number of different garlics, just like the Americas do. Extra earlies, earlies, intermediates, and lates. But the Chinese garlic and the way they process it over there it takes some of that pungency out of it. What, you're growing, what you tasted here was what they call California early garlic, grown in the Central Valley of California. And the pungency levels, that is the alleles inside there, the acid that you tasted, are, are merely stronger. That's all. But garlic is very adaptable throughout the world, so you'll get Chilean types, red-skinned, uh, blood reds that are very, very hot. And you'll get mild in central California, and then you'll get very, very hot as you go into the northern regions of all of the different continents. Uh, it, that's the adaptability of garlic. If I took California garlic and planted it in Africa, over a series of years, it would change its characteristics. It would, it, the skin color might not be pure white. It might go to pinks or purples. It may develop a stiff neck, a hard neck in the garlic. And the pungency level, that, that certain je ne sais quoi of garlic would change a little bit. It's much like wines. The, the same Merlots that you may grow in, in France are different than the Merlots that you grow up in, in Napa, Sonoma. It's an adaptable crop. So while it all tastes like garlic, if you were a connoisseur, such as I am, such as you're becoming, Joni, you would notice over the years that, oh yeah, that's a Chilean. Oh yeah, that's a Chinese garlic. Oh yeah, that's a California garlic. So tell me then, um, so is there garlic tasting places? There's garlic tasting places all through Gilroy. You can go to uh, 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 Gourmet Alley up here today, but there are certain stores that have the garlic products in them, in the outlets, that sort of thing. Uh, garlic is getting more and more popular and has over the last 20 years up and down the coast of California, even into Oregon and into Seattle, Washington, where you get these boutique growers and you get these, these types of fairs that celebrate the taste of garlic and mixing them with kettle corn or scampi or calamari, asparagus, ice cream, or raw, as you tried. So I was surprised that hear that they're grown in Washington, Oregon, I always thought it had to be a hot place to grow garlic. No, once again, that's the adaptability of garlic. One of my jobs is to grow the garlic seed to fund, so to speak, the garlic fields that are in, in the Central Valley. Most of that garlic is grown up in the high regions of Central Oregon 
in central Washington in the high desert regions. We have some in northern California in the mountains. Generally, you want cold weather to instill some vigor in the garlic, and that's what you do by going north. But that's not to say I don't also have it 100 miles south of, of Tucson, Arizona, where it gets very, very hot. That testament to the, to the adaptability of garlic, both cold and hot. This next question, excuse me for my ignorance, but I'll ask it anyhow. <laughs> so tell me, is garlic a cousin to the onion? They are both in the umbilifery family. They are both alliums. Yes, they're, they're near cousins. Uh, obviously, the taste is different. Uh, an onion is a biennial. That is, it takes two years to go through a life cycle. Forms the bulb, the onion bulb, the first year, and then forms a flower, and it does have pollen. It has males and females, and so it cross-pollinates. So the onion seed is that little tiny black thing that you see in the store that you buy here. Garlic, on the other hand, has, while there are flowering types of garlic, and there are types that actually have true pollen, they're very rare, and they're not very efficient producers of true seed. Consequently, we rely on the clove to reproduce the garlic. It's not to say we aren't working with true seeded garlics, but their application is limited right now. So when you said there's blood red garlic, I mean, I always know that, you know, there's yellow onions, red onions, white onions. Now, is there also different colors of uh, garlic? Oh, absolutely. Uh, when I say blood red, there's a Chilean type that's grown down in the Andes. It's, it's a Chilean type and it has a blood red skin. Uh, there's probably, there's hundreds of strains of garlic and they vary in color and in clove conformation and in maturity and in the taste from the blood reds on the early side to the uh, whites in the middle to the purple types which are the later garlics at the at the north end of, of any growing region be it china be it the americas be it africa be it asia so tell me one last question um you spoke a lot about your relationship with garlic yeah. And you've been doing this for many, many, many years. Yes, I've uh, been doing it since I was a kid. <laughs> I'm still a kid at heart. Doesn't that count for something? Oh, it definitely counts. It definitely counts. Um, my last question is, is, what do you use garlic mostly for yourself, personally? Myself, it's a, it's a seasoning and ingredient. Brings out the zest in life. Um, it's, our, our principal business is as an additive into uh, prepared foods. Uh, most people don't know it, but look on the ingredient label of almost any food, ketchup, spice. The garlic and onion powders are in there. For me, puts a smile on my face. <laughs> Keeps me young. Yeah. Well, your cholesterol level must be a, a lower than 150 with all if you've been eating garlic all your life. Are you kidding? I'm 86 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us this afternoon, and let me breathe in your face. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Do you have a website? Uh, ConAgra Foods at ConAgraFoods.com. Uh, we're one of many companies of ConAgra. Fine family of Orville Redenbacher popcorn, uh, Swiss Miss, Ready Made, uh, Ready Whip, uh, Whip Topping, uh, Fleischmann's, Hebrew National. The list goes on and on. Uh, Gilroy Foods, which is a uh, primary ingredient company, is just one of many companies of ConAgra Foods who's based in Omaha, Nebraska. I just got a new idea. Garlic popcorn. You know, they have such a thing, and uh, they're always working on new ideas. Call them up on their website at conagrafoods.com, and they're more than willing to take any of your suggestions. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you much. Thank you. People come from all over the world to the Gilroy Garlic Festival. Of course, one of the things I always hear about is garlic ice cream. And of course, you see uh, in this heat, it's starting to melt fast. But one thing I want to do is see what it's all about. Let's find out. Mmm, tastes like ice, ice cream. Uh, I can start to taste the garlic. Oh, yeah. A little bit of garlic. I don't think you'd have the same effect if you just took your vanilla ice cream and poured garlic powder on it. You probably have to come to Gilroy. Ice cream is just one of many foods featuring garlic at the festival. Perhaps the most unusual are sold at the Louisiana Cajun Lady booth. I mean, whose idea was it for a booth that sells this kind of food? Well, it was my wife and I, it was about 20 years ago, we uh, started this up. 
craving Cajun food and just kind of started into uh, crawfish and Cajun food. And then we elaborated a little bit with some more different kinds of meats, alligator, that kind of stuff. Are you only here at the Garlic Festival? Uh, the Garlic Festival, the Seafood, Pittsburgh Seafood Festival, the Monterey uh, Blues, just do a couple of them, yeah. So basically Greater Bay Area, Northern California areas. Uh -huh. it's, so what's been the reaction over all the years? I mean, to me, rattlesnake, kangaroo, uh, gator tails, how do those come go off for people? Uh, people enjoy them. You know, they, they, you know, they come out and try them and just see what they taste like, you know. Of course, most of it, they said, tastes like chicken, you know, so that <laughs> kind of thing, but... And uh, now, what what has been the most popular out of the, all the different foods you have? Uh, probably the the crawfish, and then the uh, the alligator and the rattlesnake. So, where do you get rattlesnake? Or well, frog legs seem to be more common. I mean, a lot of restaurants seem to have that gourmet restaurants, but gator tails and kangaroo and rattlesnake. Where do those come? Well, let's see. Uh, rattlesnake uh, is grown in farms in Alabama and different states. Arizona, different areas. Uh, let's see, the kangaroos from Australia and the uh, alligators from Louisiana. And, well, I think it's from out in Wyoming or somewhere on those plays out in that area, the stretch. Uh, let me see, what else you got? Uh, gator, rattlesnake. Out of the boar. Yeah, the crawfish come from Louisiana. The wild boar, I think, they said comes from like uh, Colorado area, stuff in that area. So how many, I mean, it's a three-day festival. How many pounds of this stuff do you go through? you have any idea? Oh, it's hard to say. A couple couple of thousand pounds, you know. Yeah, not of each, but I'm looking at this. Now, aside from the festivals you go to, do you, do you make this available to people any other way or no? I'm sure you don't, no. Wife and I are getting ready to retire and, you know, back away from it a little bit. We'll probably sell the business with... Other than that, we're just getting tired of cooking, really. Can't even cook at home anymore. We're going to cook so much of these things. So what's your personal favorite of all these unusual meats? Uh, I like the uh, crawfish myself. Yeah, through crawfish food. And do you serve the kangaroo in a pouch, or is that extra? <laughs> no. Comes on a stick. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, if they wanted more information about you, where your performances are, do you have anything like a website where they can find out more about where sure you're going to be? Sure don't. We used to, but we just don't, we, we're just scaling back. Yeah. We, so people just look for you at festivals, and if they find you, they're lucky. Yeah, that's right. Okay, here we've got a variety of the different foods they have. Over here we have gator. This is kangaroo. We have some buffalo, some snake, frog's leg, and the crawdad. So I'm going to start over here and try a piece of the gator. Never tried this. Well, I have to be honest, it really does remind me of chicken. Okay, that was the gator. Let's go to the next one. This is the kangaroo. Well, it's tender, just a little bit of toughness. Doesn't remind me so much of uh, chicken, almost like a little bit of a steak. That's the kangaroo. Okay, here we go for the snake. Similar to the kangaroo, you know, more like a steak, I think, kind of a real tender steak, almost a teriyaki. Okay, I'm starting to forget which is which now. So I just went to the. Uh, I had the gator. Oh, this is the buffaloes next. Here we go. Hmm. More like a chicken. More like a chicken. Okay. Here are the ones I thought I'd never try. This is a frog's leg. Hmm. This is more like a breast of a chicken. The kangaroo. And the snake were more like uh, more like a dark meat chicken. So this was more like a. Okay, now here's the crawdad. Now I do like seafood, but I don't like working too hard. Let's see if I can get into this. Oh my gosh! Can you see the, the stuff inside of here? This is not the most appetizing for me. A little too fishy for me. I'm a fan of like crab and 
this is just a little too fishy taste, but you know, Joni should have done this segment. She would have loved this food. But at least I tried it, you know. It's only unusual foods like this, probably the only place you're gonna find them are at festivals like the Gilroy Garlic Festival. What part do you play in this festival? First of all, do I have any garlic in my teeth? <laughs> um, I am the chairperson of the retail, which is mercantile section of the garlic festival. And um, what my job is to order the merchandise that we sell for our three-day event. Uh, I kind of can help get a volunteer, the 200 volunteers that we have just for these two tents. I kind of organize them and get them ready to go to work for us for the festival. And that's pretty much what I do. It just seems a lot harder when I'm doing it, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. No, I know one aspect of the festival is the food, but definitely the retail portion seems like a big uh, responsibility and job. And we looked around the booths here and some very interesting items. Why don't you talk to, talk to me a little bit about these items? You're, you're absolutely correct. It's, the festival's about the food, but um, the food only lasts as a memory. And every time you smell garlic, you'll think of us. But this is stuff you can actually take home and keep with you as a memory. Uh, that's what we're here for. And so hopefully people will take some of us home with you. And we also have food to take home to cook in the next few months as, as it goes. I hope it lasts only a week for they have to come back. So, so this year, what is, is there any new item this year that uh, you are introducing? The new item that we purchased this year was colanders. Uh, they're a little pricey for us. We weren't sure how they were going to go because we don't want too much merchandise sitting on the shelves and, and, and losing money for our charity. So we kind of do a little test water for them. And um, so we kind of, we order stuff that we think people will want to pay for, want to carry around the festival and take home. And we, and the pricier items we tend to experiment with. And this is our experimental item this year. This did not last a, two to three hours. We had a pre-sale for our committee chairs and volunteers on Thursday. It kind of helps the retail iron out their little bugs, make sure everything's working. This, I'd say at least 40% of this sold. We have had small, medium, and large, and they're gone. Except for I have a stash of <laughs> to buy at the end of the festival. Well, good for you. Now, I noticed, now, do you strain garlic? No, but you could store your garlic in it, and you just know that once you put that pasta in there, you're going to be adding some garlic. It's just not that you need a reminder, but it's there for you. And actually, this is from our staff office. She, this was her idea, and she was kind of testing the waters. And I told her these went like hotcakes. Her name's Chris. They're they they're gone. So she's very happy about that. She was worried, but they they're gone. Our 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 local charities will be very happy. This went well. So they probably will come back next year. Oh yes, they'll be looking for these. We're going to order a lot more. Now, how about some more interesting items? Maybe a fad item or something that uh, you have here this year. Um, I wouldn't call it a fad. I, Herbie is a consistent collectible. Herbie is just our mascot of the festival, and this is his sixth year, I believe. And every year, as a retail chair, I, I, you get to pick a design. And so this year, I went with uh, Herbie in his little uh, athletic attire. And actually, this Herbie has a lot more representation than the public would expect. He's not just an athlete. He's a part of the garlic centipede. The Garlic Centipede were runners that went to Beta Breakers. We also officially opened up the Garlic Festival for 11 years in a row. It was organized by a gentleman named Andy Vialli. He's just a regular community member. Well, he's a special community member. I wouldn't say he's regular. Um, he ran this for 11 years, had nothing really to do with the festival. We ran Garlic uh, Beta Breakers. People would say, go Gilroy, go garlic. And we'd throw <laughs> garlic into the crowd. Our shirt spelled out Gilroy Garlic. And this is just something that he reached out and did on his own. And he opened his home, him and his wife Lynn, to the Garlic Centipede, their family, their friends, and fed us and entertained us and cheered us on and was a part of the Garlic Centipede himself. And he just was a great asset to the community. Um, and so this is honor, honor of Andy Vialli. I actually purchased the first bobblehead for him and I'm giving it to him. But anyways, he, Herbie has a G for Gilroy Garlic and that's, this is for Andy and the people in the community that work really, really hard, love their community and they just strive to give back to their community. And I know that one part of the Gilroy Bar Festival, I know that they contribute to the charities, but also you are honoring people who um, actually give back in different ways to the community as well. Correct. Um, this festival would not happen without the volunteers. I was raised in a military family. We moved everywhere, everywhere. I have lived here 27 years. My son, 
over there was here since he was one. My daughters were born here. And I, I love this town. I love being a part of it. It's a small community and it's just special. And I am every, honestly, when I put this shirt on, I had tears in my eyes because to be a part of a, the, the committee, because I worked every aspect, well, not every, but I poured beer, I worked tickets, I did parking. I, and to be an official chairperson, I, honestly, when I put this shirt on, I started crying. I was so proud to be. It's, it's, just, it's just a community I love to be a part of it. Oh, I could see your passion there. Now, on the retail aspect of it, um, how many uh, of the proceeds will go to the charities? All of it. I mean, you know, after we pay our costs, volunteers are all for free. We feed them and, and get them in. Uh, but the proceeds, that's, a, that's what we're here for. The proceeds are to go back for the community. Like our volunteers, there's, they're signing up for their church group, for their high school group, for their junior high group, athletic department, music department. And so their hours go directly back to their group that they're actually working for. So they actually, we have time cards, they sign up for their group and we give them their money back. It's like a little time card. And so they work for their group and it's the way they can give back individually to their own group. So on the retail portion of it, uh, about um, on average, can you tell me like how much money gets raised? Um, actually, did you see our garlic bulb in the center of the festival? No, is that for this year or years all past? It's, it's total years. Okay. To seven million, I believe. I was part of the festival's opening ceremonies, which I've been too busy to be involved in, except for this year. It was just, it was awesome. We all kind of were in a line, held hands, lit the bulb passed the torch onto the pyro chefs and ignited the burners. Uh, that brought a tear to my eyes. I'm sorry, I just love this stuff. But um, it's over seven million. And uh, every, it's just, I don't know the exact totals. I'm not gonna, don't quote me, so I'm not gonna say. But it, whatever the, the local charity works for, they get back. And they volunteer and help. And it's just amazing that the community pulls together for this. So tell me, um, what did you buy this year? I bought a set of colanders. I bought the second Herbie <laughs> and a couple more after that. Um, what else did I buy? I, I bought some glass coffee mugs because I like drinking coffee out of the glass mugs. Um, what else? I, that's pretty That's pretty much, oh, garlic uh, peanuts. My husband loved those. And so just those few things. A new garlic shirt? Yes, yes. The poster uh, shirt, that the first place poster, I have a medium one back there with my name on it. So, and actually, uh, I went to Knob Hill or Rayleigh's today, yesterday and today, and uh, the entire staff is wearing, wearing our white first place t-shirts. And I, it just, I was so amazed. Now, I noticed the People Choice Awards for the posters. Now, when will that be judged? And will that go on a t-shirt for next year's festival? No, they actually get a, a prize. I, and I, I don't call me on the actual monetary value, but my daughters actually run that. Well, they have volunteers working the thing, but they uh, tally up the, the votes and submit it to the office. And then um, the People's Choice Award gets an award for that. Because we, we as a staff and um, <clears throat> retail committee picked the winner. And then, the, then we thought, well, you know, just because our opinion is that, let's let the people voice their opinion. And so is that new this year? About yeah, the we did it every year. Mm -hmm. Well, Karen, thank you so much for sharing your love of garlic and the festival uh, this afternoon. So have you had any unusual requests in, the, in years past or this year? Uh, years past, they want um, garlic soap. Garlic soap. And shampoo and garlic shampoo is this around uh, those who fear vampires <laughs> I guess that could be their only motive <laughs> I can't imagine other than the festival wanting to smell like that it's a good thing but it'd be hard to explain so you were sharing with me earlier about how this festival has affected your life personally can you share with our viewers that same story I sure can um, three years ago we call it on a Saturday of the festival not a particular date because it changes almost every year. The Saturday of the festival, I danced with a handsome man on the gazebo stage right here, and we got married on this past February. So this is where I met my husband, and actually the wedding ceremony was kind of impromptu, just a small personal group of friends, and we got married on the gazebo stage at the park here, uh, February 16th. So that's my personal story, and uh, it's just, uh, so at 2.30 today, he had a, a personal a commitment to, t to take care of, and I couldn't get out of this, which is fine, that he went to. But before he left from 
205 to 225, we danced together on the gazebo stage. I turned my radio off for just a little bit and just enjoyed our time together, celebrated our time. And I said, you know what, John, this is kind of like what our life is about. It's like work hard and play hard, and this is kind of what the festival does. So it kind of joined us. And uh, so this is our private place, even if not, not today, but it's our, yeah, all year round. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. You're quite welcome. I'm, I'm proud to say it. It's just part of us, and it's part of our personal life, too. So, Well, thank you again, Karen, and uh, uh, have a great festival. Thank you very much. <laughs> have fun, everyone. Okay. See you in 2008. So what's it like? Why do people braid garlic? It's the best way, to, and the, it's, it stores the best. The air can circulate all the way around the garlic and it stores better than when you buy it in the store. When you buy it in the store, that will only last about three months, but in a braid, it lasts about nine months to a year. It lasts this, w this way. In Old Italy, they've always stored it this way. The air circulates and the, the stem is still attached. I see, and so that's what makes the difference? I think so. And so uh, nine months, I mean, that's a big shelf life difference from three to nine yes, months. Yes, it is. The air circulates all the way around, whereas if you have it in a bowl or a garlic keeper, wherever it lands is going to make a bruise, like in a banana, and that's a weak spot in the garlic. It just And a lot of times you buy it from the grocery store, and it's actually a couple months old because it's been stored in cold storage. It's not fresh from the, from the farm. How should people care for it once they buy it? Well, I printed up a care card for each garlic braid, and there's about seven things that I think that are important. First one is store in a cool, dry area. Second one is hang the braid on the loop. There's a loop in back, and it's located at the top of the braid, and it allows the, the air to circulate all the way around the braid. Fresh garlic will not release an order, odor. It doesn't smell at all until it's pressed or smashed or squeezed. It needs to be hung in the kitchen. It can be hung in the kitchen, but it has to be away from heat, like an oven or an open window. And the humidity can't be near a refrigerator or a dishwasher, those type of things. Refrigerator, I said that. Uh, cut each bulb from the top of the braid whenever you need to use it. The life expectancy of the garlic to eat is approximately one year when stored properly. Garlic braid can be used for decoration and if you left it um, intact, not touched, it would last indefinitely. So uh, what's the typical range of, of braided garlic? I mean, is it sold in pounds or how do you sell? We sell it in small, medium, and large. Our smalls are 10 heads of extra jumbo garlic. Medium are 18 heads. Large are 24 heads. And with a shelf life of nine months, I mean, what would the typical person buy if they just use it occasionally? I guess it depends occasionally, on- Occasionally, a medium fits real nice on a, sh on a kitchen cabinet. The root color and the wood complement each other and uh, color of each person's kitchen are different so whatever color of the kitchen they have they match that up and it's a terrific compliment so even a decoration other than just a great uh, food as a decoration as a decoration it should last indefinitely wow it's in a cool dry place all right thank you very much thank you Tony, we finally did it. We attended our first Gilroy Garlic Festival. And I'm glad we did. I enjoyed learning all about how important garlic is to the Gilroy community and what it takes to make such a great festival. The contests and celebrity chefs were just some of the fun. But of course, the food is what I think most people come here for. Well, maybe not all the food. You really ate alligator and rattlesnake? Hey, how could I pass up the chance? The Gilroy Garlic Festival was great, but sadly, since we recorded our visit, one of the country's best known food festival was canceled permanently in 2022. A 2019 mass shooting and the COVID-19 pandemic were some of the events that led to the end of this legendary celebration. Although the festival ended, the Gilroy Garlic Association continues to hold other events each year to benefit local charities and nonprofits.